Hello again, I'm Dave Absley. I'm a forester and a natural resources specialist with Ohio State University Extension. Today I'm joining you from our woodland here in Jackson County, Ohio. I'm just off the floodplain of Horse Creek. And that's typically where you're going to find this species. It's called shellbark or king nut hickory. I know when most folks look at this tree, they're going to think shagbark hickory. But there are a few things that separate this from shagbark hickory. They both occur throughout the state of Ohio. Shellbark is not near as common, um, but the big difference is where they grow. Shellbark, also known as king nut hickory, tends to have an affinity for low-lying, floodplain type forest, or maybe on the lower third of the slope, whereas shagbark is typically going to be higher on the slope on much drier sites, and it can actually grow to fair, on fairly dry sites as well. So how do we separate these two other than the location? Well, the first thing is leaves. The leaves on shellbark hickory are quite a bit larger. As with all the hickories, there are compound leaves, and the leaves size and leaflet numbers are great ways to separate the hickories. Other things that work very well are the nuts and the thickness of the husk, the buds, and the bark. We'll talk about all those. But as far as leaves, Shagbark hickory almost always has five leaflets. It tends to be a much smaller leaf, whereas shellbark hickory has seven to nine normally. Some of the keys say it can have five, but I don't think I've ever seen fives. I almost always see sevens and nines on the trees. Again, much larger, large, long rachis, and typically larger leaflets as well. Like all the hickories, they do have some teeth around the edges of the leaves. Um, and typically the terminal three leaflets, the one at the tip is by far the biggest, the other two on the side are, are big as well, and then they tend to get smaller as you go down to the base. Unlike ash or walnut, they tend to be more consistent in size, so that's a great way to separate the hickories. And like all other trees, typically trees with large leaves take large twigs to support them, so that's another great way to separate the two. Twigs on shellbark or king nut hickory tend to be very stout, at least a quarter inch in diameter or so. They tend to be a little bit orange in color, so you'll see just a little bit of an orange tint, and they'll have very large terminal buds. The lateral buds or the buds on the side, um, again, alternate sides just like the leaves. They tend to be about a quarter to maybe a third, maybe even up to a half inch in length, but that terminal bud can be three quarters to an inch in length. And the outer scales on that bud towards the base hang on all winter long. Shagbark and shellbark are the only two hickories that have these scales that hang on winter long, all winter long. So that helps to separate them from the rest of the hickories. And then, of course, there's the other thing, and that's the fruit. So like all the other hickories, they're going to have a fruit that looks like this. I've actually got two types of fruit that I'm juggling here in my hands. Both of these actually are very close in size. The hickory actually may be a little larger, but this is a walnut. How do we know that this is a walnut and this is a hickory? Well, if we look at the husk on this nut, it tends to stay more green later into the year, but I'm not seeing any splits or sutures on this nut. Um, it's just a solid, continuous husk that covers the nut. Where the hickories will have splits or sutures, and this one will break into, it looks like, four, maybe five sections. Um, shellbark hickory tends to have four to six sections on this husk. And then when you break it loose, you're going to see a husk that's pretty thick. Um, shagbark hickory and shellbark has the thickest of the husk. Shagbark tends to be probably a bit thicker, um, but the husk on both is going to be at least a quarter and up to maybe a half inch or maybe even a little bit more in thickness. So that's a great way to separate the hickories as well. Shellbark hickory or king nut hickory also has a large nut, as the other common name implies. Very large nut, very good tasting sweet hickory nut compared to the other hickories. Tastes a lot like shagbark hickory, um, except they're larger and you probably get a little more nut meat out of these. So it's you're probably worth the work if you can find some shellbarks. Also, the squirrels love them. Uh, the nut is very bony and hard, and very few species can actually take advantage of a hickory nut, especially one as large as this king nut. You can see this one's been worked by the squirrels, and actually I'm hearing squirrels working in the background, probably on some of the other shellbark hickories 
and some of the oaks around here. And then finally, we're gonna look at the bark. Um, the, the hickories have a variety of bark. The two with the shaggy bark like this, we call it exfoliating bark. It'll be loose at the bottom and at the top of the plate. And the wide plates are gonna be shag bark or shell bark. And again, the way you tell them apart to start with is where are you located? A shell bark can become a very large tree. Probably on average, a mature tree is gonna be much larger, larger than a shag bark hickory as well. Uh, so again, loose exfoliating bark, tree that grows down on the floodplain with large hickory nuts. We're talking about shell bark hickory or king nut hickory. Thanks again so much for your time and please take at least part of your day to enjoy it in the woods.